OK. Um, thank you. I, I will um, do a lecture about my uh, letter. I will present my work um, as a um, constructed atmosphere or a meteorological uh, architecture. And uh, so this, all this um, project start in 2005 and it is linked with the idea of uh, sustainability and global warming because we, you know, this kind of uh, figures that show that human activity are, uh, are uh, behind the, the global warming and the fact that the heat of the world is becoming bigger. Um, this is this red curve and the model. And so um, there is a different idea to fight against uh, global warming and one idea in Switzerland it is to arrive at this line of 2,000 watt for one person for, during one year. So it means to reduce the energy in the building. And if everybody in the world are at 2,000, we could have a, a sustainable uh, world. So today we could not switch directly to, uh, to, 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 to um, uh, green energy, we still use uh, oil and, uh, and, um, and gas, and so the first thing it is to reduce the energy consumption. And, um, and the, the, this is the situation in, 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 uh, in 2000, and so this is the idea to reduce the energy. And we, if we want to do it um, for the building, this is the main, uh, in Switzerland, this is the main idea. It is a, uh, there is an insulation of the envelope of the building, the ventilation, and the use of the double flux with heat recuperation. Uh, it means because when you change the air inside, um, you lose a lot of energy by changing the air. So. Um, so the idea it is to use this uh, double flow system to, to keep the air inside. So, um, so this is uh, the different elements, so the thickness, the big thickness of insulation of the envelope, the um, double flow ventilation, and if this is the old situation, and this is a new situation with a big insulation and double flow air renewal. And if we, are, if we look to these um, tools to reduce the energy, we understand that it speaks about insulation, about heat, about flow of air, about energy. So it's, it speaks more about uh, meteorological world than, uh, than tectonic world. It means that it is uh, the element of architecture become more uh, linked with heat or air or vapor or light, and um, and maybe not so much with uh, structure or with uh, material or uh, with a visual element, but more with invisible element. And so the idea it is maybe to change the language of architecture because uh, in the traditional idea of um, of the, of the language of architecture. Uh, there is the element of architecture. It is like the column, the wall, the, the roof, the door, the window. And um, so it's more visual element. And there is also some invisible, uh, some uh, element of composition. It is like, for example, uh, like uh, addition, subtraction, uh, um, multiplication, inclusion. And maybe we could uh, change the, this element and say that uh, maybe the element of architecture are no more uh, visual, it's no more the, the column, the wall, but it becomes the air, the vapor, or the light. And the element of composition are no more the, the multiplication, the symmetry, or the uh, asymmetry, but it could become uh, some meteorological phenomena like evaporation, conduction, or, or uh, 
conviction. And so this is different uh, posters that show this uh, different element of architecture like evaporation, conduction, uh, low pressure, radiation, and convection. And so I will present um, different projects linked with this uh, subject. For example, I, will, I start with evaporation. And uh, so the idea is really to take evaporation as, as, a, as a design tool, uh, the design force to, to drive the project and to find the form of the architecture through um, uh, evaporation. Uh, so the um, um, the first reason for for uh, the vapor in the in the house is um, is because we breathe in uh, in the in the space and when we take the air from outside there is for, for example forty five percent of relative humidity and it take in, inside us and we lose a lot of of uh, water on the air, and when it goes out, it's at uh, ninety percent of relative humidity. And uh, so we have to change because if we don't change the air, uh, so the vapor come bigger and bigger, and after there is some uh, uh, some some transformation of the vapor into water, and so there is some uh, condensation like uh, mushroom or some uh, uh, some water that appear. So uh, we need to change the air. So the, this is the first reason of ventilation. It is to change the, uh, to 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 take the vapor out of the building. And after there is a second reason. It is to change also the oxygen. But the first reason is really the vapor. So if we focus on this idea of vapor in the building. Uh, we could, for example, take the idea of, um, of one house and we, uh, we could read that if you are asleep, you produce 40 grams of vapor during one hour. If you are in a normal position, you produce 150 grams during one hour. If you use the kitchen, you cook and you produce vapor. So it could be like 500 grams into 20 minutes, and if you take a shower, it's uh, 80 grams in 20 minutes. So it shows that uh, related with the use of the space, you produce different quantity of vapor inside the space. And if you want to uh, change the air inside, with uh, because you you in the winter, for example, and um, you need to change the air, so you will bring new fresh air here and it will go first in the most dry area and after going in the living room and after going in the kitchen or in the bathroom or in the toilet. So it means that the new fresh air arrive in the most dry area and go into the most wet area. So um, if you just look to this uh, schema, it's, it's, it is an interesting schema because it changes the typology of the house. Because normally, if you think about uh, one house, you think that the typology could be related with the public and private. For example, you and you and go inside the house, and you are first in the most uh, public space, like the living room and the kitchen, and after you find the private room uh, behind. Or it could be um, uh, day and night. Uh, so it's it is a kind of composition of the house. But here, the first. Um, reason for the composition of the house is a kind of uh, uh, landscape uh, between dry area and wet area. And the idea is really to focus on this idea and to say that a uh, uh, house today it is uh, a space stretch between dry area and wet uh, area. So we were invited for an uh, IBA in Hamburg and we we made a three project for them. The first, we just uh, do a first ID, but we don't develop. We only develop one ID on the, on the convection. But the first one was on the, 
on this evaporating flat. And so we take this um, diagram and we propose an apartment uh, really um, like, um, like a plan of uh, humidity inside the space. So it means that we, we introduce a new air here and after it moves inside the, the house and it goes out here. And, um, and so there is a kind of plan of uh, humidity inside the space from the dry area to the most humid area. And following this, uh, this uh, planification, we introduce the function inside. So the idea is first to start with the climate. We first design the climate in a certain way. We introduce the, the, the entrance of the air and the exhaust air at the other side of the house. And after, uh, we, we start to introduce the function inside. So here it could be the, the, the bedroom for the parent. Here it could be a, another room. And after it, go, it is in a more uh, wet area where there is a living room and after the kitchen and the bathroom and the bathtub. So it, it creates a kind of uh, landscape in the house uh, between dry area and uh, wet area. And so we, we made a different uh, proposal with different uh, size of the apartment. And, and my, my uh, personal interest here is really to take uh, this uh, idea of uh, sustainability and, and uh, to analyze the new techniques linked with sustainability and from these uh, techniques to to discover new way to compose the plan, new way to uh, to draw um, the plan of uh, of the building. So, in the same idea, um, uh, this is a, a project about uh, uh, also one house, and it's the link with the um, idea of barn, because before modernity, uh, the house was, uh, or today it's uh, the same, but uh, the house was stretched into, also into dry, uh, uh, between dry area and wet area. Uh, and um, there is an interesting book from uh, Gaston Bachelard called Poétique de l'espace, and this book is a, um, is a critic of the modernity. It's a book of 1958. And Gaston Bachelard says that he, is, he, he don't like uh, modernity because he says that modernity creates uh, an horizontal uh, line uh, instead of a vertical line as it was before. Because he says that the house before was a vertical uh, composition. It was a composition between the cellar and uh, where it was cold and humid, and, uh, um, and when you go high in the verticality, you arrive in the attic where it's dry, and he says that the human mind is in, in a certain way in the same organization, so this is um, irrationality, this is a murder, or this is a strange things in the, in the cellar, and this is a, uh, the rationality and the cleverness in the attic. And he says that when, uh, because, and what happened with the modernity, but um, if we focus to this, uh, what it, 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 it also shows that in, in the old house, there is not only one climate like, like it is today, but there is different climate, different zone at different um, uh, climatic qualities. Um, for example, in the cellar, uh, you keep potatoes or some uh, vegetable or the wine at, the, at a certain humidity and certain uh, temperature. And if you go higher in the house, so you could keep the, uh, the food at different. And when you arrive in the, in the roof, you have some dry uh, things. Uh, yeah. So the, the house was between dry 
and um, and wet, and you could keep different food uh, and different things at different uh, temperature and different uh, level of uh, of uh, relative humidity. For example, when it's very humid, you have uh, you have some uh, yes potatoes or uh, wine. And, uh, but you could also introduce the bathroom. You could say the bathroom is also here. And uh, when it's become more dry, uh, it is a bedroom, or uh, there is some grain, and uh, yeah. So there is a kind of mapping of, um, of the function and uh, the food uh, conservation in the house through uh, temperature and uh, humidity. And so you could organize the house uh, uh, from the low relative humidity, where you could find corn or rice or nuts or, or computer or tomatoes, shower, toilet when, when it becomes more humid. And if you analyze what happened with the modernity, um, it was the modernity uh, destroyed the two extreme climates, so because for an economical reason and some uh, production reason, uh, the old house with the cellar and attic disappear, so this, this, um, uh, the roof disappear and the cellar disappear, and what happened, it is that the, the humid area go in the fridge and the, and the dry area go in the cupboard, and um, and the cupboard go, uh, the fridge go inside the house. So this, uh, there is a transformation of the cellar, of this humid space that become no more a space but become a furniture, an object inside the house. So there is a kind of disparation of, uh, of, one, uh, uh, of one climate that become an object and the house become a horizontal composition. And um, our idea today is to reverse or to change this, uh, to go beyond uh, further than uh, modernity, not to come back in the, in the old time, but to say that maybe we could, uh, re, uh, um, because after, before the, the verticality of the house with the cellar and the, and the roof, we propose to switch um, the verticality into to accept the modern horizontality of the space, but to um, uh, to let to take the climate from the fridge and to let it uh, outside, and the climate of the cupboard that go outside in no more in a vertical way, but in an horizontal way. So this is a little the idea to take the house to reverse this. The modernity reverse it in a horizontal way, and uh, we stretch it with a, and we introduce a dry source and a humid source inside the house, and we following the different uh, need of uh, furniture and uh, and food, we organize a plan of the house. And we have one image at the end. So where it's very humid, we have the bathtub or the shower and the, and the wine. And when it's dry, we have the bed. So this is the same system of the double flow air renewal, the new techniques of air renewal. And we accept completely this technique. And we try to find a new form, a new way to design space following in a very literal way, uh, this new technique. And so at the end, we have this image uh, of a contemporary house with dry area there and wet area there. Uh, so this is another project based on, the, on vapor, where we also uh, uh, we, we, it, it is completely an artificial uh, system, so we use this double flow air renewal uh, with a perfect insulation, and we, we have the fresh air that arrive here and move inside the building, so the building becomes, it's uh, like pipe, like a ventilation uh, pipe, but the pipe becomes bigger and bigger, and, you, and it becomes space, so there is no more um, there is no more space and technique, 
the technique becomes the space and the duct or the pipe of the ventilation becomes the space of the building. And, uh, and so this is the, 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 the idea. So this is the fresh air that arrive and move inside the building and uh, we propose to introduce uh, air uh, dry activities and air more humid activities and more, more very humid activities and, um, and so here it becomes the entrance where you don't use a lot of, uh, of the air and after there is a uh, here it was a sauna and uh, a dry sauna and here it was a uh, amam and here it is a shower so there is a kind of, uh, of, um, of planification of the function through the climatic uh, movement of the air inside Uh, now I, I present another um, series of projects based on low pressure and it's also linked with this uh, new technique, with this double flow air renewal. So this is a technique, so there is a fresh air that arrives here and go in the house, in the most dry area and after it go out in the more humid space and before going out there is this uh, heat exchanger that takes out the, the heat and uh, warm the fresh air, the new air. And so we made uh, three projects on the, based on this. The first project was um, also for a sport hall. So it's linked with sport activity. So when you do a lot of sport, of course, you consume more oxygen. So you could uh, see uh, oxygen consumption after when you do uh, exercise with the body. And, um, and this is a respiratory rate. And so normally you, you breathe six liters during one minute uh, of air. So you breath, uh, you, could, you could take something like uh, uh, 50 or, or 100 um, liter of air. Uh, if you do sport, and uh, this is some uh, recommendation for uh, to change the air, link with um, with um, uh, with the activity. So the hall, the entrance hall, for example, you don't spend a lot of time there. There is not a lot of people here, so you could change only two times for one hour. But in the toilet, you change 15, and in the shower, 30 times. So there is different rate of uh, changing the air of the building linked with the activity. So we made a little the same. So this is a, um, a fresh, the new air arrive here, and there is another source of new, of new air, another source of new air. So the building become like a river, where there is first a small river of air, and after there is another river, and the big river become bigger and bigger. And after we, uh, following this uh, different, um, here there is not a lot of air renewal, and here there is a lot. So we introduce a function inside, so here it's an entrance, and here it could be a yoga room, and here it's more a sport um, room, and here it's an intensive sport room, and here there is a shower. So th there is always a continuity of the air that moves through the building from the entrance of the air to the exhaust uh, exist of the air. So we made the same with a bigger project. Uh, so um, we keep the same idea, and we uh, of this is the machine, the air renewal machine. So the fresh air arrive here and go in this space inside and go out and before going out there is uh, this plate, this metallic plate uh, inside and so normally it's a small machine 
And here we we decide to to enlarge the machine to the size of the building. So all this small machine becomes the building itself. And so we have the new air that arrive in the space and it go out. But um, this is a sport hall. So this is the ID. So this is the cold air that arrive and go in the in the sport place and after it go in the in the changing room and in the shower and after it go out and the idea is to to have this is a big insulation and to have here uh, um, uh, a wall in in a, in a metallic wall that create an, a neat conduction exchange between the air from this side of the building to this side. So when the fresh air arrives, it's cold, so, uh, and it's become warm with a normal radiator inside, and when it goes out, it gives the heat to the cold air that go inside the building. And, um, and after following this, we introduce a function linked to this. So here, when it's more cold, it could be the storage. And here it is a sport hall, and here it is a shower and a changing room. And in between the two sides, so there is this metallic um, partition, and so this cold, this warm air before, before going out, warm the cold air that go inside the building. So all the building become a kind of um, augmentation of. Um, uh, augmented uh, double flow machine with heat recuperation. So here yeah, the new air arrive here. So this is a storage and another storage where it could be at 10 degree or 12 degree. And this is a spot all at 14 degrees Celsius. And after here yeah, it's become more warm and it's uh, 20. Uh, 22 and 20 and it go uh, 18 and uh, 16 and it lose the heat when it go out. And in the same ID, uh, but using the uh, also the wind from outside, we use. The, um, uh, the ventilation uh, during the summer and the winter. During the summer, so you, we use a, uh, the wind as a natural ventilation uh, um, force inside the building. And, uh, and during, uh, uh, during the, the, summer, the winter, we warm, the idea it is to warm uh, because the swimming pool is warm. If I go, go here. So this is a swimming pool, so it's the air of the swimming pool could be something like 28 degrees Celsius. And so the idea it is to warm with this air all the changing room, but we don't want to share the humidity of the space with the, with the, um, with the changing room because we don't want uh, that the humidity go inside. So the idea is to uh, to have some metallic box that go inside the the warm climate of the swimming pool, but without the air. The air come from inside, so it's it's uh, there is a low relative humidity inside the changing room, but it's warm uh, by the air. And the roof go down to uh, because the warm air go up, and so the the roof go down, and with the air it it uh, brings the warm air to the changing room. And after here there is this conduction element. So this is the project. You don't see; it's not easy to see. Okay, this is a this is a swimming pool. The wind arrive here and it go out, and this is a box 
uh, for the charging. Okay. Uh, the next element is conduction. Um, so we use also we accept uh, the idea of the big insulation because uh, today uh, in Switzerland we use 16 centimeters of, of insulation. But if we want a very um, performative building, we could use something like. 40% with the Minergy P. And, um, and so uh, there is something, uh, so this is this uh, diagram, so if you have bigger insulation, so you use more, less energy than if you have a thinner. Uh, and, um, and in a certain way, we don't know exactly where is the exact interior and where is the exact exterior because the exterior is here and the interior could be here or here and here. So the interiority could be become a kind of uh, gradation of the um, U value, the thermal coefficient. Uh, so you could have a, an interiority of at 0.3 watt by uh, square meter. Or you could have an interiority of eight of zero point seventeen. So there is not a, a clear idea of where it, where it is inside and outside. And so interiority become a kind of uh, layering of a different um, uh, uh, layer of insulation. So we keep this idea and we uh, we start to you don't see we start to. Um, uh, to split the insulation in two different uh, space and and uh, to and start to uh, to live inside different uh, layer of insulation and um, and so this is some recommendation for example they say that the piscine must be at 26 degrees Celsius or uh, the corridor could be at 15 degrees Celsius or uh, the um, uh, the shower at 22, and uh, so the sport hall could be at 14 degrees Celsius, and um, and the uh, office or uh, um, uh, restaurant could be at 20 or 19 degrees Celsius, and so we take this ID. The sport hall is at 14. The sh uh, shower, the, the fitting room or the changing room at 24. Uh, Shower 26, and uh, and so we propose to have uh, to create some different envelope, different uh, box or bubble inside one. There is a kind of one big bubble and another, another, and so uh, so here it's a 16 centimeter, but it will, at the end it's 48 centimeter of insulation where it's. And, uh, and so the, we keep this idea to do the project, and the project become uh, this uh, dilation of uh, different thermal uh, layer of insulation. So this is the first layer at 22, where there is a shower, and it go inside another bubble at 19, and it go inside the big bubble at 14 degrees Celsius. So we see nothing. So this is the plan. So we have uh, we have the first bubble here that go inside the second bubble that go inside the third bubble. And after there is some connection between uh, the second bubble and the exterior, for example, on, or the first bubble and the, and the exterior. Here, the first go out, and the second here go out, and this is a, the second inside the, the third. And 
So we have uh, one image where we see the first layer, the second layer here, and the third layer is here. So we have this different uh, layer of, uh, of insulation that create uh, an addition of building inside the building, inside the building, that, um, that, that gives a final form. So this is a 16 centimeter and 32 centimeter and 48 centimeter here of insulation. Uh, we made the same for a museum, um, also with a. Um, so it, it is also some different layer. So it, it starts with this idea that. Um, today we don't know where it's where it's really inside. If it is uh, after the first layer of glass or the second layer of glass, and today we have three layer of glass, and so the idea is that we enlarge also this uh, idea of different layer of glass, and all the building become layer of glass, and uh, with different quality inside. So it's move. So the temperature is more cold during the winter and the first, first layer and, and more cost, uh, warm into after the second or the third layer. And um, <coughs> and so all the building become this, um, this addition of layer like uh, augmented uh, Okay, and I will finish with uh, with uh, convection. So uh, there is different project linked with the idea of convection. The first project was uh, for the Biennale in two thousand eight in Venice, and the project was called Digestible Gulf Stream. And so uh, the, we start with two, I, two, um, two ideas or two, two ideas that um, that already exist. Uh, the first um, idea was the Swiss standard recommendation um, from the Society of Switzerland, and there is some recommendations. They say if we want to be um, to reduce the energy inside the building. We could warm uh, we, uh, the bathroom at 22 degrees Celsius because we are nude, naked inside the space, and we uh, with some white water if we go out from the shower. And so 22 is good because if it is only 20 or 18, it's too cold. And and uh, for the living room, it's uh, it's 20 because we don't move and we are motionless in the sofa. So 20 is okay. See if it is 18. We become cold in in five ten minutes. So it's a, in the kitchen you move a, a little and you cook. So eighteen is good. And in the bedroom you are inside the inside the bed. So sixteen is okay. And the corridor it could be fifteen degrees Celsius because you just move through the corridor and you don't have time to become cold in uh, ten seconds when you are in the corridor. So this is not my idea. This is uh, some Swiss idea. Um, and they say, of course, if you warm all the bedroom in Switzerland at 16 degrees Celsius and not 26 degrees Celsius, you win four degrees, and so it's a big reduction of uh, oil and uh, energy, and multiply by all the bedroom in the Switzerland and Germany and France, so you could economize a lot of energy. So this is the idea to reduce to the minimal uh, the, the temperature you could have inside the, the, the different function. But if you, and you really, as an architect, you look to this uh, data, 
you understand that you could no more have a plan libre of Le Corbusier or a, a Miss van der Rohe open space because it's a thermodynamic uh, rule. So it's like if you have hot water and cold water, if you, you, if you have only one space, uh, so you turn the warm water and the cold water, and after five minutes inside, it is uh, the, the hot and the, and the cold become uh, in between. So uh, this is the same. So if you, you have no doors between the bathroom and the kitchen, uh, so you warm the bathroom at 22 degrees and the kitchen at 18, but after five minutes, if you don't close the door, you will have 20 everywhere, so you will turn on the radiator to 20 in the bathroom, so at the end, in the kitchen, it will be 22 also. So, um, so this idea, need to have separate room, some box with, uh, with door. You could not keep the door open. And so it means that you have to come back in the 19th century uh, with box and, we, and you could no more keep the modernity uh, open plan and, uh, and freedom of, um, of the modernity. So this is a problem for an ar architect uh, to close the door and to lose the, the quality of the space of the 20th century. So this is the first point, and the second point, it is Archimed law. It is a physical law of uh, Archimed, and, uh, and this is a law that says that the, cold air, the warm air go up and the cold air go down. And what's happened, it is very warm here. It could be, when you really measure the temperature under the roof, it could be 28 or 30 degrees Celsius when it is only 18 at the foot level. And, um, and so, um, uh, so it is a problem because what we want, we want to have the opposite curve. Here it's red and here it's blue. But what we want, it is to have a... Um, uh, to have the red here and the cold here. Why? Because nobody are under the ceiling, so you could have a minus 10 degrees Celsius, so we don't care what happened after the head. And, um, and because of the body, um, we, we have less blood in the food, so very often we, we won't have 24 degrees Celsius on the foot level, 20 here and here after the head it could be uh, zero degree. So the curve is this curve, the ideal curve for, the, for, for us, and this is the ideal curve, and the natural curve of Archimedes, of the nature, is exactly the opposite, uh, because the warm air go up. So we lose a lot of energy here under the ceiling. It's a, it's a, um, uh, it's a loss of energy. And, uh, and the idea was to, uh, for the Biennale, was to say we will build this curve uh, as an architecture. And we say we will, this is a section, and we introduce a warm radiator and a cold radiator, or it could be a a very warm radiator here at 26 degrees Celsius, and here at a radiator at, at um, 16 degrees Celsius. And so we modelize with the software uh, what's happened. So the warm air go up and touch the cold surface and fall down. And so it creates a kind of uh, shape and uh, a movement of air. And it is a little like a convective movement, like a Gulf Stream. So the warm air go up and touch the cold surface and fall down. And it creates different line and also different space. So uh, this is the section. So here it could be 22 degrees Celsius. And here it could be 20 and 19 and 18 degrees Celsius. So without wall and without partition, we find different place at different temperature. And we could see some shape too. And so for the Biennale, we we create uh, we have created 
these uh, two platforms, and it was like a model of uh, a kind of atmospheric uh, coal construction and uh, a very minimal uh, in the the visual was very simple and uh, and but the quality was more inside the invisible uh, space and um, and so the idea was really to design the climate, to say that architecture is not only to design the wall or the sp what's, what there is uh, around the space, but it is to design the space itself, uh, the, uh, to design the climate itself. So it was like this. So And at the beginning, there is not really function. It was just uh, an idea to create space, uh, architecture only with a thermal difference, uh, without partition, just by uh, acting directly on the space. And so following this um, idea, we start a project for uh, French artist Dominique Gonzalez Fuster. And so the idea was this is a section. So we introduced two radiators. So uh, one was at 22, and the other was 15 or 16. So it was we take the two uh, maximum and minimum from the Swiss recommendation. So here it is a 22 of the bathroom, and here it is a 16 or 15 of the corridor. And um, and so we, as I said before, I say uh, house today it is uh, a, a landscape stretch between dry area and wet area. Uh, we could say also today uh, an apartment or one house, uh, a house it is something a space between 22 degrees Celsius and 15 degrees Celsius. It's a kind of landscape between two uh, between a warm uh, area and a cold area. And so we introduce uh, these two temperatures, and so it creates a uh, different space. And for example, here it's at 22, here at 20, 19, uh, uh, 16, 17. And following this Swiss recommendation, we introduce the furniture inside. So the bathtub arrives here at 22, the living room is at 20, here there is a, the kitchen at 19 or 18, and the and the bed arrive at 16 or 17 degrees in the space. And so we introduce the function inside, and we the furniture. And after we connect, um, we connect the different uh, furniture, the different object with the floor. And the floor we need to have open the floor with open uh, opening inside. To let the air moving everywhere in the house, and after we have this image, so uh, this is the bathtub, the, uh, this is the bedroom, this is the living room, and the kitchen is here, and. Um, and here, under this floor, there is a warm uh, radiator, and here there is a, the radiator at 15 degrees Celsius. And, um, and so the idea um, before it was to create, um, because here we, you could see that we could have uh, this, the bed, bathroom at 22 degrees Celsius without a door between the bathroom and the bedroom because we use uh, natural Archimedes law and the convective movement to, to create the landscape. So it's, uh, the idea was to keep the space quality of the 20th century with the plan libre or the open space of the modernity, but to introduce the different value of temperature into the different function, but without coming back to the 19th century with closed box and, and doors. So this is, it was the objective of this. And so um, I was invited at the Louisiana Museum in near Copenhagen, and so we realized the same. 
but without convective movement, just by using the warm air go up. And, uh, and so we, we map the different climates, the different temperature in the space, in the, in the section and in the plan, and we introduce a function at different high, different altitude linked with the temperature. So where it's very warm, it's, we introduce the bathtub, and where it's more cold, the, the bed. And after, and after we have this image, of a kind of contemporary apartment uh, with a bathtub in the more warm area, atmospherical uh, layer of the, of the air, and the bed here, down. Okay, we, we, we did the same with the museum, so we also introduced a cold uh, um, at 16, like for the storage, and 22 for the office uh, space, and so this is uh, the, the warm air go up and the cold air go down, and so it's the, we follow a different uh, plan, we follow the, the uh, the climate, and so downstairs there is a lot of cold area, so it, there is a big storage and a small office space, and it becomes bigger, and so each, each uh, um, floor, the plan change, and in between there is an exhibition room in the more green area, and so we have also some image of uh, of the project, and of course, we must keep open uh, in the floor to let the air moving everywhere. And the last uh, project is uh, for IBA. So this is the same idea, but we introduce also something on the and the public space become like tank of fresh air, and we take uh, during the winter we take the fresh air more at the top level and more in the in the down uh, in the low level during the summer. And the slab also changes the shape of the slab change to create some different um, position in the space and different quality. Uh, more more cold air, more warm air. And inside, uh, we have a kind of landscape at different altitude and different uh, uh, quality of um, temperature. Okay, and just some image of a last project. It was the same idea also to have a kind of golf stream inside the building, the office building. And, uh, and to use the, the space, the public space, and the corridor and the, um, to, as a tank of fresh air. And and, uh, and so to do it, we delayed all the, the space between uh, the different office. And so this is all the space where the air moves in between. <coughs> This is the last image. Okay, thank you.